Uh, tonight, this is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen, if I could call it to order, at 638. Frankly, we're late because we were talking about tire pressure and setting of auto vehicles and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, we're going to reorganize tonight. We had an election on uh, Saturday. Uh, not great turnout, but not necessarily a really rugged election either. So for those who did pass uh, turn out to vote and uh, pass on that torch of uh, your democracy, well, thank you for participating. And two, as the newspaper has said, our chief executive official, the town clerk, That's thanks right. for running a really good election. I appreciate that. Uh, our first order of business tonight, again, is going to be to reorganize. Did you read that in the paper today? Yes, I did. <laughs> Our Love chief it. executive officer. Our chief executive officer, the town clerk. <laughs> and I hope she's at home right now waving a fist going, they misquoted me. Anyway, um, Beth, Beth is here tonight to talk about what is effectually going to be known as our project in exactly that tone. There's opportunity look, and... You have to look down. Exactly. There's opportunity in every Shakespearean tragedy, <laughs> and this one continues. Our first order of business, though, is to reorganize, and so for that, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Sherry. She's done this 29, 28, 20 something a few times. All right. Tell us how we do. Okay. All right. First order of business is to reorganize the board for the coming year, so I'll accept nominations for chair. Uh, nominee Tom? I'll second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we love being elected, don't we? Reelected, Tom. Reelected. Re -elected. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Not 3.75. 3.75 <laughs> to right. zero. <laughs> we got a hand up in the rear back there. All right. <laughs> In nominations for vice chair? Scott? Uh, second. Okay. Uh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And nominations for clerk? Nominate David Pierce. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Tom, you want to run this one? Or? No, I, I think Scott uh, has been our past history. I would, uh, I would uh, leave the gavel in your hands until next week. It's been actively, would, actively would, used please. all year. <laughs> <laughs> right there. That's where it's sat. Okay. Beth Greenbutt is in from Beacon Integrated Solutions. And she's going to tell us a little bit about the current status uh, of our uh, PV projects, plural, rolled up as to one. Our last iteration, we were going out for engineering review. We thought at one point in November, October, that maybe the engineering review was on the individual projects. It came back to be a holistic or a collected review and engineering review. And that information has come back with jaw-dropping fun. Yeah. So, Beth, thanks more than anything for all the work to date. So. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Um, do I need to be there on my okay. okay. You're all good. Um, so as you know, when we went out to bid mm, well over a year ago for the second time to do two solar projects, one at the elementary school and the other at the public safety complex, we put out to bid as, as sort of our intended projects the sizes that had been previously approved by the planning board. Um, after all of their diligent effort and work and the work of the, of the board, we selected Kearsarge um, Energy as our vendor of choice to develop those projects. They had actually bid the first time around and were highly interested in trying to get it over the goal line for the town. Um, Kearsarge, after award, promptly started their entitlement process and filed there, as you indicated, Scott, the interconnection applications with Eversource Energy, formerly known as Wimico, um, which is where they sat, as we last spoke, which is where they sat for months and months and months until Wimico decided it was more efficient and cost effective to put them in a group study, as you suggested. Um, initially, a group study of two projects, ours are two projects, Somehow it grew, unbeknownst to us, to four projects. 
and then the other two projects dropped out. So that created some further delay. I've been told it's delayed our process another week, but no more. Needless to say, um, last Monday, WAMICO issued their group study report to the town and to Kearsarge, and as you indicated, we got some draw-dropping results. In fact, the sizes of the two systems were smaller than the original size, which had negligible interconnection costs, and the interconnection costs for doing both of those projects at smaller than the sizes originally anticipated were north of a half a million dollars, which made projects of this size completely uneconomic and not and unfinanceable. So Kearsarge came back to us and said, we want to do this for the town. The town has hung in here with us. Um, it is important for us to try to move this forward. So we can only focus on the elementary school at a smaller size. Instead of interconnecting directly to the utility, we're going through the meter. So we'll offset their consumption and the additional generation will come back and be allocated to whatever town buildings the town identifies. Um, but they also said that because of the scale of the system shrinking down, they're having a hard time making the project economic for their investors. So they came back to us and said, instead of us offering a 12.5% discount off of net metering, we can only offer a 7.5% discount off of net metering. And so, as you saw in the memo I put together, I looked at the analysis, and while there is certainly an impact on the economics, one, instead of doing two projects, we're doing one, and second, we're doing a third a, a, a project that's smaller than the original size, and the economics are not as good. With that being said, the economics are still attractive. Um, it you know, I, you, you folks have heard me say before that I think these are win-win situations when you achieve the three E's, economic benefits, environmental stewardship, and educational opportunities for kids. And so I think the project still meets those goals. I think those are goals that were important to the town. The same sort of benefits of what we always thought would be provided will be provided. There'll be a LED panel where they can see real-time generation, that kind of stuff. Um, but the overall benefits from net metering will go down because the price of electricity from them has gone up a little. Um, with that said, originally for the, for, um, the larger system, you were looking just at the elementary school, you were looking at about, in the first year, about a 14% savings all in, inclusive of electricity cost savings plus the tax liability of about 14%. And that's gone down in the first year to about 12%. So there's still a, a healthy savings, just not as healthy as it was before. Sure. And then that grows over, I mean that, you know, over, over time, that will grow provided the cost of electricity also grows. So, as as you know, I have always and historic I've historically been very conservative in my analysis because I'd rather I'd rather that the town under promises and over delivers. So my analysis generally assumes energy costs are not going to change over 20 years, and I think we all know that's not likely to happen. In fact, it's my understanding that Wamiko may be looking for a rate case. If they're not already in one, they are looking to to file a rate case. Right. So we'll see distribution charges go up. Mm -hmm. Whenever the cost of electricity goes up, your benefits go up proportionally. Right. Because it's a, it's a discount off of whatever the utility rate is at the Got time. It. Got it. The other sort of challenging thing that we sort of had to deal with in the, the you know, the 30th hour was the <laughs> fact that the region, that the school had entered into a two-year supply contract right. With a, with a, uh, an ener a competitive electricity supplier. So working with Sherry and with Patty Cavanaugh, we approached their supplier, which is Constellation New Energy. Okay. Um, after reviewing their contract um, and realizing that there was no financial liability or legal, from my perspective in reviewing that contract, and I do that on a pretty regular basis for other clients, um, there appears to be no legal or financial liability hmm. 
for taking less than originally contracted. So they didn't, they didn't contract to a set volume, if you will. Did not. It's, it's like not listen. a take or pay. Yeah. It's not a must take. Yep. It's basically we'll supply you with 100% of whatever those requirements are. Nice. So instead of waiting for Constellation to affirmatively come back to us with a, a letter confirming that, mm -hmm. knowing them as well as I know them, how sure. long that would take, right. um, and the jeopardy it would put this project in, um, I sent an email to them laying out our position and indicating if we don't hear back from them by Wednesday, we'll assume it's accepted. Yeah. I did hear from them this morning. All they wanted to know is, do we have an idea of about how much generation uh, might be coming from the system? Not so much on an annual basis, but perhaps with more detail. Mm -hmm. So I sent them a file with an estimate of mm -hmm. monthly volumes and then broke that actually down on an hourly basis. Okay. Hmm. So okay. clearly the system is going to generate more in the summer when the school uses less right. Right. and less in the winter when the school uses more. So net net, they're still probably going to be serving north of 50% of the school's okay. requirements. So I think they're going to be fine with it. That contract expires in September of 2017, mm -hmm. and we'll just make sure that when Patty renegotiates or goes back out to bid for future right. periods, she keeps this in mind and provides the information to the supplier. <laughs> I did send the correspondence that I, that I sent to Constellation New Energy to Town Council, David Donetsky, yeah. just to make sure that, sure. not being an attorney, to make sure that there's a, one additional thing he would have wanted us to say in that email that we could follow up with. Right. Haven't heard anything back yet, but he said he would take a look at that. Thank you. So, on a regulatory front, I tried to cover it in, <clears throat> in less exhaustive details than I normally do, and so I'll just give you two seconds of updates. Um, as you know, the net metering caps were increased. I think, you know, Sherry and her community um, and her colleagues worked very hard as well as the board to sure. push the legislature to to take a look at increasing the caps. So the, so the net metering caps were increased by 3% for both public and private. Um, Western Mass Electric had not yet hit their caps, so that gives us a lot of bandwidth to play with right nice. now, which is a good thing. Um, although there is an overarching cap on top of it of 1,600 megawatts, yeah. which means that once there's 1,600 megawatts DC mm -hmm. of capacity behind net meter of net metering, the rules then change. Mm -hmm. For municipal projects, the rules don't change substantially with any significant financial impact, if any. For private projects, it's a big change. Mm -hmm. um, it it transitions from a retail rate for reimbursement mm -hmm. to sixty percent of a retail ah. rate. So community share solar projects, which you may have heard of, mm -hmm. those projects, no more than 50% of the generation can go to an anchor or a single entity, and then the rest would go to consumers and businesses and others. Mm -hmm. So it gives homeowners an opportunity to do what municipalities now can do, Got which it. is this virtual net metering relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a great project. It's a great program. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing is the new caps on net metering, coupled with, particularly behind National Grid, Western Mass Electric, not as much an issue, coupled with the the, the huge waiting list that right. National Grid has right now, yeah. is going to limit a lot of that. Right. But in Western Mass Electric service territory, we still see that being a viable option. Hmm. So if there were additional land, or um, if the town of Sunderland wanted to seek out other types of opportunities for its residents mm -hmm. to consider and share that information as a sort of public information, um, we can certainly do that where, where there are projects that may be available. And I'm working with um, a couple of developers who are actually building projects in Western Mass Electric's service territory. A couple of my clients are the anchor tenants. Yep but they're still looking for, for consumers huh. who may want to buy in and simply get a discount on their electric bill. That's it's basically the way it works. It's a discount off of net metering. So if there's a dollar of net metering credit that gets allocated to the bill, in this case, the developer would keep 85% and the homeowner, the residential it's homeowner, difference. would keep 15% hmm. of that. It's kind of an interesting approach. Yeah, absolutely. Huh. So that's net metering. Um, the other sort of confounding issue that all happened at the same time because of the um, 
the net metering caps and the legislation that was moving through the state house, there was a huge rush on projects seeking solar renewable energy credit certification. Mm -hmm. So much so that in early February, the, the department, and there was a 1600 megawatt cap on that, yeah. the Department of Energy Resources carved out a section of the available capacity, about 120 megawatts, and said this is earmarked for residential, huh. for small installations to sure. make sure that the big projects don't gobble everything right. up and the small right. projects that were moving forward would be harmed. And that's been a pattern depending on where you were in a given application year and with a given utility. Exactly. You could have simply said, Absolutely. we're not taking anymore. Absolutely. Okay. And so that left about 30 megawatts of capacity for solar renewable energy credits. Mm -hmm. Everyone then flooded the, the certification process with projects. So much so that DOER instantly shut the program down mm -hmm and basically suspended taking any further applications. Huh. They recently, um, about three weeks ago, filed emergency regulations. They knew it was coming. Yeah. They filed emergency regulations and basically said, anyone can apply for SREC certification at this point under the current program, but the project has to be mechanically complete Ah, by the year end. By the end of 2000, basically by January 8th, 2017. So everybody's targeting year end. Huh. That impacts Sunderland's projects. Sure. So if we don't get the project built by the, it doesn't have to be interconnected to Wimico. Right. It has to be able to interconnect, right. mechanically complete, by the end of the year. And then Kearsarge will get their SREX and the project economics stay as they are. So right now it's a race to the finish. There's mm -hmm. going to be, you're going to see a flurry of activity mm -hmm. between now and the end of the year. Kearsarge is committed to getting your project built by the end of the year. Mm. And that size, downsized in that location, coming in behind the meter, yeah. simplifies a bunch of that. It doesn't, mm -hmm. outside of their general workload, it doesn't seem like it's. I think it simplifies it for Wamiko. I'm not sure it simplifies it for them as much because right now there's there's some pressure on the uh, the electrical trades yeah. um, are going to be tapped pretty heavily now because there's so much activity going on. Um, the nice part about about our project is that it's fully entitled right. at this point. They've applied for SREX. Um, once Kearsarge signs the interconnection agreement that Wimico sent to them, um, we will be able to apply for net metering mm -hmm. and get in the queue and they will start, the, they will order the equipment and start rolling we'll, right, essentially. We'll, we'll likely do a have a kickoff meeting with Bob Lesko and the schools just to make sure that we can coordinate construction. Yep. I think one of the things that I'm sure the board will support with the school committee is the need to be flexible. Mm -hmm. yes. Because Kearsarge needs to get this installed by the end of the year, it is possible they will not get it done over the summer and will need to go into the fall. And so they'll, they've worked at schools before sure. and they understand the issues, but they'll need to stay, um, you know, we'll need to work with them to make sure that we can get we, we're not in the way of progress. Sure. You're not working nights and Sundays just to accommodate. Yeah, I hear you. No. Hopefully they won't have to work at nights. It gets a little tricky when you're yeah. working on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But interesting. Beth, should we be worried about option one, two, three, four with respect to Everest Sources group impact study or is that rolled into the economics? No, so option coming in behind the meter cleans up a bunch of that? So option one, two, three, and four was basically if the if the town wanted to do both projects. Got it. Yep. And you can see the sizing on options one, two, three, and four, yep. and the crazy costs. The option two, at, as, as a standalone at the elementary school, was the smaller size system, mm -hmm. and those interconnection costs were zero. Okay. That was the only thing that didn't trigger the right. direct transfer trip. Got it. And that's why yep. they opted to do the smaller, because this, the additional costs associated with this would have been uneconomic, right, particularly right. behind Wimico. Right. Okay. I appreciate you clearing that up. Questions? Board members? First, Beth, thank you very much. Um, it's a long process. Um, I, I would say even it's a 20-year 20 20-year 20 commitment for us to lease the land. Um, it's not going to be a permanent fixture. It's 20 years. Um, there's There's possible that they may upgrade over course a year to get better generation whatever so and 
not only that, but I think we're making a statement to our children in the school um, mm-hmm. that it's important. Well, it's, science, is a, science is a wonderful thing. And I think it's a, amazing if you can actually calculate how many solar panels were needed to power this United States. Mm-hmm. And it is online. You can look it up. Mm-hmm. And, and people think it'd be entire states. And there's actually, it's a very small... When you look at the total that's needed to power the entire the United States, of Texas, that it, little thing they it, did, it, it, it's yeah. a very, very small portion of a state. It, yeah. It's not. Right. So if somebody wants to take a look at it, see how much actual photos, photovoltaic was needed to power the United States. It's not a lot, first. So, so I think the science is amazing. And at the university, they just put up on the Robson uh, Visitor Center. They put some solar cells on top of a. a parking area mm-hmm. and they have a kiosk that you can go and you can look at the uh, the amount of energy that's being produced and 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 just that little portion it talks about how many um how much carbon is mm-hmm. um, sense. not being produced it talks about how many uh, terms of gas are not being used trees that, that it, 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 it talks about it. so i i think if we help help our integrate some of these technologies into our classroom, and, and to me, I always thought it was important to bring s- science. For a lot of people, is you have to touch it to understand what it is. So I think it's a great thing. So I would I would say yes. Matter of fact, I would continue to look at other ways that the town may uh, invest in solar by do, maybe doing something ourselves. Maybe we can right. you know put something together. Are on our own. I would also say that I'm still waiting for Eversource that was so <laughs> upset with us the night that I made some comments and they had promised they were going to send someone here meeting? to address it. Um, they still have, <coughs> by the way, they still haven't come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would also say that typically when a business, when a business such as the town of Sunderland um, is in a position where we're hurt financially by another company that we may have recourse. So I am at some point, I'm going to ask for an executive session to consider what options that we have with Eversource legally. And I, I'm sure we're not the only, right. not the only ones um, that have been put in this position. Um, may, maybe there's, there's, there isn't anything we can do, but I'm tired personally on this is a very simple project that started on June of 2015 and it's not until now that we've had a, really a response and a response that made it economically uh, and feasible for us to mm-hmm. put, to what we had which not a year ago was very sure. feasible it's to do one whole economically. project right so when when some and, and plus we've gone from 14% down to 12% mm-hmm. we've been hurt economically right and, and I would I would suggest that <clears throat> had DOER not extended by emergency regulation the ESREC program, this project would have been dead right. because Absolutely. of Wimiko's delay. Yeah, that's my point. I, I I I totally recognize that because I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen in other places also. So I, I think and and I I think we need to talk to our legislators. I think we need to mm-hmm. talk. But when but when one business hurts another financially, sure. Sometimes you have opportunities. It's and interesting, you know, in the construction, of these, there, there's oftentimes, you know, liquidated damages for missing dates. But during the application, even with the tariff guidelines, the response, 60 days turns into five and a half months. Well, there's, as no Tom points out, there. there's an economic component to that. Mm-hmm. We could have disinterested um, consultants <laughs> or stakeholders in the form of Kearsarge. They could simply say, listen, we moved on. Well, and we went out of our way with this second attempt at it to make sure that we didn't change anything. Right. And it would have been nice to increase it even, but we went out of our way to make sure that we were all in compliance with what was done the first time, done and approved, I might add, the first time around. Because that was one of the things we took pains to do because we didn't, on our side of the coin, we didn't want to do anything to delay the project. Look where that got us. The other, the other two things that I, I just want to point out, <clears throat> and I mentioned in the memo, because the system size got smaller, mm-hmm. the 
personal property tax is Went gonna, down. will also go down a little bit. Sure. Um, <clears throat> I use the same methodology I worked on with Lee yep. um, at the time, and so we'll just confirm that with whomever in the town sure. yep. you want board me to work with, yeah. so the board of assessors, yeah. and have them you know, yep. take a look at a, a tax agreement and move forward yep. with that. The other piece is Kearsarge will have decommissioning <clears throat> assurance yep. so yep. that you all know that in 20 years, when your contract is up, if you want them to remove it, there are some options after 20 years, but in 20 years, if you want them to remove it, they have to remove it, and there is a surety instrument there to ensure that it comes off. Perfect. Right. Yeah, we made sure of that in the right. process. Yeah. Perfect. And there will be a kiosk or a LED screen. Um, initially, when we thought we had two projects, we were going to put the public safety one here, and we were going to put the elementary school one in the elementary school. Um, I defer to the town yeah. where the care search doesn't care. They just need to be able to plug it into the internet. Right. I would say put the put the and I think the school be, because we can do a link on the website. Absolutely, so we can do a link on the cover. website. That can cover. be interesting for the the residents of town. I, and again, if you want to go look on the UMass one to see what happens there. Same. Yeah, it's Greenfield it's the same too. system. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Greenfield. It, it, it's it's to look at that and just to see. The resources that are saved, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can yeah. see good days. You can see bad. But even on Saturday, when it was raining, it was still. I think it produced like it was average like eighty two kW. Right. You know, which, on it wasn't, and most of us know it was not a sunny day, <laughs> but it was still generating. So, and you can see when a cloud goes over, you can yeah. actually watch yeah. the thing dip and then come back up. It's kind of neat. It's. Yeah. yeah. It's near real time. It's a fifteen minute delay, but it's it's pretty cool. But, but I but I also, like I said before, I, I also feel that I think we've been, um, I think Eversource has financially injured the town, and I think that we we may look at other options for them also. And and, and again, they, they're, they're a conglomerate. Um, they don't pay attention to the little people. Um, and their, their, their main thing is for their shareholders. Well... I think, in, in my opinion, when when you're you're given a monopoly on on a on a product basically, and you do this, it's not showing good faith. So, so having once worked for a utility where you have the loudest voice, <laughs> I know is when they file for a rate case, you intervene, mm. and that's when you're heard before the regulatory agencies sure. about really how it works, as opposed to their. Hmm. what they're indicating and and you know it could simply be MMA mm -hmm. um, it could be your group of small mm -hmm. town administrators I mean intervening in their rate case Absolutely. has a has a loud voice even know. throwing out our experience as case study listen just so that you know this is recent history yeah. Yeah. this is what's unfolded here that's a good point actually and, and honestly I think the utilities were sort of hoping that all this net metering would go away right and oh, when, yeah. the legislate, when the legislature, yeah. when the House first voted, yeah. it looked pretty promising they were going to get their way. Yeah. Once, I think, the members of the House recognized what they voted for, mm -hmm. there was a, a complete, almost 100% turnaround. Turn, they, almost all of the House members wrote to their leadership saying, that's not what we thought we were voting on. Right. And so the legislation that came out afterwards was much more positive and supportive of a robust solar industry in Massachusetts. We had a good meeting with Steve Kulik who came out to the library and it was a very good session that covered a lot, not just the solar, but a lot of renewables and a lot of that. It was, it was a very good uh, good turnout and everything. And have it at a, at a local setting as opposed yes, to exactly. a conference, conference room in, in, uh, at the State House. Right. So if the board <clears throat> decides to move forward <clears throat> um, with this, I would assume that the next steps is to re-engage. We're pretty close on the contract documents. Mm -hmm. I sort of parked them on the side while we were going through all of this drama mm -hmm. um, with the state and with Winico. I thought, let's not incur other costs that don't need to be incurred. Mm -hmm. um, but I would think we resurrect the contract documents, um, which, as you know, we we originated. Right. Here, Sergeant, we negotiated You know, some details. There'll be some things that we'll now need to revisit, but for the most part, I would say they're 90% of the way there. Okay. We'll get the the exhibits populated, get them finalized, um, and if 
get them, you know, before you vote to execute. Okay. So it seems even though the discussion here is around a continued uh, path forward with respect to the single project, we should take at least uh, this upcoming uh, week to understand uh, the actual warrant article in motion at town meeting. Uh, when this was passed, to make sure that it was um, authorizing the board to negotiate. I remember the first one was pretty specific with respect to size and location and et cetera. So, and a vendor, mm -hmm. right? And that one, of course, we revisited. We went back to a second town meeting. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged that there's still some opportunity for the town. I truly am. However, we, we have to revisit, revisit that sure. article in motion. And I don't think... I don't want to work off of memory. Lord knows I would get myself in trouble. <laughs> I think you tried to keep it broad. But yeah. I understand. Yeah. I think we tried to keep it broad as well the second time around because of the need for some measure of flexibility right. when it came to actual project. And I guess the punchline is, if there is really a punchline, regardless of the size, it's not optimal, and it doesn't cover the the total consumption of the town, which was the goal the first time around with the combined projects equaling our annualized consumption, it still ends up being uh, a net benefit. And invariably, principally speaking, and it can be argued, um, principally speaking, still the right thing to do. And there may be an opportunity, mm -hmm. perhaps for another selectman meeting and discussion, sure. and I'll present the information first to Sherry, yeah. but there may be an opportunity for the town to enter into a virtual net yep. metering agreement yep. for the balance of yep. your requirements. Yeah, I actually had written down during the description, Beth, you know, is this the time where we go back and revisit our own uh, long-term capital plan and simply go, mm. well, there's 12 KW, right. there's 12 KW, you know, there's et cetera, et cetera. Right. We have rooftops that right. we can... Understood. Yep. So again, that makes, that it's, this may kick us into a broader discussion right. for all the right reasons. Okay. Anything else for Beth? Just okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, can't thank you enough. So much. I, I wish I wish I could have had better news, but it's gonna still have, good news. It's still good right? news. It's still good news. Remember when you when you when you split the oyster, you know half of the shell that's useless goes over there, and you still get to eat the oyster. And you get to do something else with the oyster. Exactly. Right. Just right. lovely garden. See? Yeah, exactly. You know? Save your oyster exactly. shells. Thank you. All right. Thanks have so much. Have a great night. Thanks, have a great day. Okay. Uh, we reorganized. Beth has given us all the great news. Uh, if we can take a look at <laughs> Can we take a look at the minutes of uh, May 2nd? Motion. Yeah, second on those. Uh, motions made and seconded for the minutes of May 2nd. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Okay, next up, we have board updates. We can start. There is a... Um, there is a... 120 North Main Street th uh, thread going around about setting up a meeting to talk uh, specifically to designer selection, designer builder mm -hmm. selection. And uh, I don't have that date here, but tomorrow it's in. Tomorrow at 630. Well, there it is. <laughs> you I better write that one down. <laughs> All right. Tomorrow at 630. And that's a good thing. And thanks, Sherry, for continuing with uh, that uh, um, compact process. Okay, that's it for me. Anything else for board updates? Uh, solar. <laughs> that was a live yeah, update. Yeah, it was. And then we also had a lovely complete streets meeting just before this nice. one. So we're um, essentially trying to line up our potential projects to feed into that. Oh, and, nice. Um, this, I think one of the things we're all keeping in mind is the timeline for these. It's really geared towards shorter term, quick hit kind of projects. You know, we couldn't roll, for instance, like the... Um, North Pain yep. into that. Yep. So we were trying to work on coming up with that list. Smart. And you know, you go through the list and you kind of realize, well, you can't do that one because it's a bigger one. And so it, it was it was good exercise in coming up with that list. And we adopted our um, complete street policy, policy. Oh, good. recommendation for the board. We'll have that for the next meeting. Nice. So making some good progress. Yeah. Okay, Tom. Anything? Um. We uh, will be, the RFP came out the other day for the uh, South County EMS housing, so nice. if anybody's interested in putting in a, re, uh, a, re, a response to the RFP, um, it was in the paper the other day, um, or you can, I'm sure you can contact the town of Deerfield. Mm -hmm. um, 
just like to uh, thank everyone that voted and congratulate David. Um, and it, and it's hard and it, until someone's ever run for a position um, and recognize the fact that someone has actually marked or written your name down. It's a it's a great honor. So it doesn't matter if it's one one person voted or a hundred thousand people. David, congratulations. Yeah, good point. Good point. I'm very grateful for everybody who showed up to vote and glad to be sitting here. Nice. Get back to work. Plenty of work. That's for sure. Okay, Sherry, what do you think? Now that we're through town meeting, wound the calendar up, got the list going. Starting our meeting. Let's start doing it again. Yeah, planning meetings. <laughs> Community pathways today. We talked um, about next steps with regard to the boat launch project. Uh, town council's drafting the order of taking uh, for parcel A. Um, and so we'll be moving forward with that. The planning board meets tomorrow night and I believe they'll be signing the plan that needs to be filed as well. So we're moving forward with that. And the Complete Streets project as well. We have an energy committee meeting in the morning. A 120 North meeting tomorrow evening to talk about the PATH grant and moving forward with that. And a meeting with the FERCOG on Thursday uh, to talk about some DLTA ideas. Mm -hmm. Can I follow up with a question, uh, Sherry? Now that we've got the annual town meeting board that included some, obviously the appropriations are effective July one. I mm -hmm. completely understand that. There are there is some pre work associated with that. Uh, I think about oh, the draft draft RFPs for the technology in this building, or if you go down the capital list, those those right. steps. Again, they don't have to be starting on on. Uh, Tuesday morning, but you know, I would imagine we wouldn't want to go too far into the summer before those are released for right. bid, and we can start those processes. Yeah, town meetings warrant is a live document. It comes around. It's marching orders. It's, marching orders. Right. it's a good way to put it. Yeah, good way to put it. You confirm your plan and then start doing it. Okay, so we have anything else, Sherry? So we have uh, interviews next week, 15, 16, 17? Yes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with police chiefs. We have draft questions in front of us. We have a chance to take a look at them and any comments? What are you thinking, Tom and David? Um, I, I would think that we should go over them and uh, mark them, mark what, you know, what we think is appropriate. Yep. And uh, send them to Sherry so she can start putting them together. I, I, I mean, yeah. how many questions do you want to ask? Police chiefs, I would tend to think you would want to be somewhere between 15 and 20 and not much yeah. more than that. No, that's a lot. I, I was thinking 12 yeah. to 15. Okay. Because it might be hard to get through 20. In right. Without having the dialogue. Mm. I mean, well, having I, I having would, them available doesn't I would, necessarily mean you have to use them. Well, that's true. I, I would say each of us should have one or two one or two that we definitely want to hear. Mm -hmm. yep. And you should mark those appropriately. Yep. And then the other ones we should go through and see... Uh, and Sherry can time. look at those, and, and we can say yay or nay to those. And okay. Majority. How many did we ask you? <laughs> no, I was just trying to. Remember. I was trying to remember. Yeah, there was, was a fair 10, amount. 10, yeah. Wasn't it? Ten to twelve. I was yeah. going to say about twelve. Yeah. No. Nope. Ten to twelve. Yeah, you're right though, because then if you come up with ones you have, you know, you want to hit, and then if there's right. time, right. you can move off into the optional. Good points. Good points. Okay, so we will get these back to Sherry for oh, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, share them that yeah. way. That's good. Right here, we're ready. We're ready to roll again. Our, we're starting our interviews. Those are public interviews. They'll be televised, nice. and uh, they will be right here. Scott, I do have one more thing. Yeah. Um, Monday's meeting, if it's okay, I'd like to post that for seven for the first interview. Okay. We have a board of health meeting at six. Okay. Um, to just go over some housing issues, we're uh -huh. gonna have a uh, member of the planning board, selectmen, board of health, um, in the building department. Sure inspectors okay. to just go over some ideas sure. to address some housing. Is issues for seven? No trouble with the interview at seven, Tom? David? No. It's fine. Okay. Thanks, Sherry. I appreciate that. It is usually never a problem. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so. Good point. Good point, David. Okay. We have our questions. We have our homework. We have some mixed news with respect to our PV um, projects. And uh, as the outgoing chair, I'd like to thank everybody for a really good, productive year.
Thank you. Thanks, Scotty. Chairing for the year. You set up a bar. Try to keep the <laughs> yep. minutes under an hour. <laughs> I work. I work with our producer director. She's like, no, I, I sixty would, minutes is a TV show. She, she's I got would, a switch that just shuts off. <laughs> after. I would Click. say. I would say that that <laughs> going to probably going to end next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. Next week, don't count on sixty minute. Yeah, uh, no. uh, sixty minute meetings. That's for sure. No. Okay. Anything else to cover? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two to zero, please. Call us up to 718. 3.75 to zero.